Hi, Elaine here. In this video, I'll be showing you how to save time and money and create an impressive personalised calendar with a free downloadable template. So, templates. Useful, customisable, increasingly sophisticated and powerful, and time-saving. But where do you get them from? Well, you've got many options when it comes to sourcing templates, and a lot of those sources provide for free templates. It might surprise you to know, if you have any memory of the templates Microsoft used to provide, that a great place to start now is actually Microsoft. Their templates are the most integrated, and they have an extensive range in many categories. They are much improved in the last few years. The first step is to open Word and locate the template you want to use. So from within Word, when you open Word, you are taken to this view. This is Word 2013 for Windows. I have a list of recently used files on the left hand side. And up here I can search for templates. Now I have a full range of templates already installed, but there is a huge library online. So in case you don't have the template that uh, I intend to use, let you follow along. I'm going to type in calendar and it's going to go away and search through, as it quickly said there, thousands of templates online. And it does indeed bring back an entire range of calendar-based templates. The one I'm going to use is right there in the middle, but I'll just show you just how many of these there are. There is a huge range of them, and rather than you spend time wading through them, you can drill down into your search results by using the categories on the right hand side. So if you particularly wanted one for business, you could filter for business, you could filter for weekly, or maybe if you're a student. So you can use these filters to limit the range of templates brought back to you. Now, the one I'm going to use is this one, so I'm going to click on it. When you click on any of the templates, you get a preview. It gives you a little bit of a write-up about it, and it also gives you a visual preview on the left-hand side. If you're decided that's the one you want, then just click the Create button. Now, this template is intelligent enough to request that I tell it what dates to use. So this is the first dialog box, and I would like here to create a calendar for January 2014. I would also prefer it to start on a Monday, so I will select that option too, and OK. Once I click OK, it goes away and uh, creates my file. It gives me this dialog box that says success, your calendar is updated. It also gives me some information telling me that I can go back and change the dates if I want to. But there's a little warning there, which is if I've made certain changes, it could affect Word's ability to make changes to the dates within the file. Now, I'll have a look at that further down the line. So OK to that. And there is my calendar created. Now, the first thing to notice is that I have an extra tab on my ribbon. So I now have a tab that says calendar. And this is only available when I've used this particular template. So I have a range of tools available in there. So I'm going to return to that shortly. But first of all, I'm going to look at the actual template. So I have a header area where I have the month and the year. Also have a placeholder image, which I can change and I will do later. Then I have the days of the week and then I have the actual days within the month. Further down the page, I have some notes. That is also placeholder text, but it's also giving me useful information. It's explaining how to replace the picture in the header with one of your own. It's also explaining how to select new dates for the calendar and also how to format the calendar in different ways. So it's actually giving me useful information. So I will return and change that shortly. But right back to the top. And let's go through the options. So the first option was the ability to select new dates. So if I go in there, I see the same dialog box as when this file was created. But now I can make a selection. So February 2014. And again, it will change the dates for me. It will give me the same success and warning dialog box. But now it has actually changed it to be February 2014. The next option available from that ribbon is the change calendar colour. So I shall click on there. This is a customised dialog box that is only available within this template. And it gives me a, a limited range of colours to choose from. So I shall choose that orange colour and click OK. 
and that will change the entire look of my calendar. Now, it is not taking the value that I specify, though that orange, and applying it to everything. It's rather using it as a base colour. And then what it will do is update the borders, the shading and the text. Now, there is a caveat to using that in that any manual changes that you have made. So if you had already gone into your calendar and you'd manually formatted an element, that manual formatting may well override the colour changes available from that option. So always a good idea to use the options available when it comes to changing the colour rather than doing things manually. The next range of tools I have are the standard clipboard tools. So these are available from there. And then further along, I have some styles. Now, these styles are applied to the content of this template and they have already been updated. So there is a connection between me choosing the change calendar colour options and the styles available within this document. So at the moment, the monthly there and the heading are two shades of orange. If I choose something else in that select a calendar colour option and OK it, then those styles will be updated to reflect that. So they've changed from orange to blue. So the two are linked. The other way to make changes to it is to choose a different theme. So if I click on the drop down, I get a whole range of themes and I can actually preview them just by hovering over them. I don't have to click anywhere. So I'm just previewing a few of these. And then when I find one that I like, I will apply that. And a theme is applying more than just color. It is also changing the font. So as I'm hovering over these, you should be able to see that the font itself is changing as well. And some of them are very, very different. So I shall go for this one here, which is a rather lurid pink and apply that. That has also updated the styles within my document. So they are now pink. So I have a theme applied and I like the font there, but the colors are a little bright. So I can then go into the colors and just dial the colors back down a little bit. So um, let's go for something a little paler than that, something like that. The difference between themes and colors is that colors only changes the colors. The themes also change the font. But if I just if I'm happy with my colors, but I'd rather have a different font, I can also just elect to change the font. So as I hover over here, it's offering options for just changing the font and not the colors. So the two can be used independently. I also have an effects option, but that works mainly with shapes. So I shall leave that alone for the moment. And my final selection of tools is the editing tools at the end here. So I have find, replace and select. Now, probably the first thing I'm going to want to do is to change some of the text on a date or add some text to a date. So in here, it's saying that if I just click that once, this is placeholder text. And if I want to replace it, all I need to do is click it once. So I have done. And now I have a choice. I can either enter some text that represents an appointment of mine, or I can delete that if that if I don't have anything on the third and I don't. So I'm just going to press delete and that has gone. But on the 13th of February, I actually have a webinar and my webinar is all about Adobe Cooler. So I'm going to put in Cooler Color with Adobe Cooler. Then I'm going to train my installation of Word. I'm going to uh, add color spelt the UK way to my dictionary. I will also add the word Cooler because uh, that's something I use all the time. So I shall add that as well. Now I've got rid of those red squiggles. So there's my webinar entered on that date. If my webinar moves, then all I've got to do is triple click. Once I've triple clicked, I can drag that to another day. So again, triple click and just drag it to another day. As it happens, it is the 13th and you'd be most welcome to join me. There we go. So there it is, the 13th of February. Now, further down, I have my notes and at same principle here, I only have to click once to make a selection and then I can enter any information that I would like to be reminded of across the entire month. So I shall put in there quarter end and I may also have the annual report to think about. So annual report and the shareholder meeting. So shareholder meeting. And that's will be there to remind me for the entire month. 
Now back to the top because the next thing I need to change is that image. So to change the image, you click on it once, you right click and right in the middle of the context menu is change picture. So I'm going to click on there. Now it tells me wait while we load the pictures and it gives me four options four locations that I can find images from. There's also extra options as well. I can insert an image from a file, which is the first option. I could search office.com. I could do a Bing image search, or I could actually pull in an image from my own SkyDrive. Also options are Facebook and Flickr, but I'm going to go to browse my SkyDrive and find an image from there. So it's uh, going up there and having a look. And luckily for me, the image that I want is here. Now that isn't actually an image, it's a folder. But the way SkyDrive works, it actually shows you the contents of the folder. So I can click on there and it is now loading the contents of the, that folder. And you can see I've got a folder within there for Excel. I have some PowerPoint files and I have some Word files. So I'm going to click on there. It's now actually drilling down another level. And finally, there's my image. So I'm going to select it and click insert. It's actually downloading that live from my SkyDrive and it will then insert it into that placeholder. And I've changed the image. Now, the next thing I need to do, I'm based in the UK. And the layout of this page is not A4, which is the standard page size in Europe. So I'm going to go to the page layout and I'm going to select size. And just to confirm, it is set to letter size. I would prefer it to be A4 size. So I'm going to make that selection in there. A4 is slightly narrower, but it's also longer. So if I now scroll down to the bottom, you can see I've got much more of a gap and I'd rather not have that gap. But these notes are in a table and I can click on that table, make a selection and just drag it down to make the table better fit the page. So uh, very simple to make it look correct, even if I change my page size. So I've done that too. Now, that warning box, the one that warned us if we made too many changes, we may have problems trying to update the dates. So I'm going to go back to calendar and I'm going to go back to select new dates. And I'm going to change this calendar to be January. So January 2014. And let's see what happens. Now it tells me it's done it. So success, your calendar is updated, gives me the same warning. And as I go in here, let's actually have a look at what's happened. Well, what it's done is it has changed all the dates. It has moved my webinar, but it has left it on the Thursday. So it is... Um, relatively in the same location, but the date has actually changed. So it doesn't keep it on the 12th. It actually changes the date. So the dates themselves move within those cells, but the contents don't. Now, as it happens, I do have a webinar on the 16th of January, but it's not the cooler colour one. So I am going to uh, select that text and I'm going to change my webinar. My webinar is Will It Blend, which is a strange name, but it's all about Photoshop blend modes. So I shall put in there Photoshop blend modes. And there's my new webinar. So it has successfully managed to update the dates, irrespective of all the changes I made, which were changing the graphic, changing the colours, changing the fonts, changing the page size and actually changing the size of some of the elements, including the text box at the bottom. So there you have it, a free template customised to your precise requirements and preferences. Let's quickly recap that process. Really simple. Search the online template library at Microsoft, select your template, specify the date range, format as required and you're done. If you want new tutorials and tips and tricks on a regular basis, check out my free training at elainegiles.com slash VIP. If you have any requests for specific tutorials, be sure to contact me. I would love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.